Well, President Trump says he doesn't want American troops in Syria, yet his administration is also maneuvering to topple Bashar al-Assad from power. That's surprising to some of his longtime fans who appreciated his calls to avoid foreign quagmires. One of those is Ann Coulter. She joins us now. Ann, it's nice to see you tonight. So what um, Washington is, is very focused on, on this and other foreign policy questions. What should people who supported the president from the beginning think of what's happened in the last week? Um, well, I knew there was going to be massive pushback for everything Trump proposed to do on immigration. I didn't realize that the pushback would be as strong for not starting pointless wars. You would think that would be one of the simplest things to do. Um, but it's been interesting watching so many of these generals, I mean, straight out of Dr. Strangelove, um, pushing for war with Syria, war with Russia, war with North Korea. Um, I thought General Mattis' statement, the Secretary of Defense, was fantastic yesterday, and that seemed to be returning to the Trump policy on the campaign, which is, um, I mean, how many times did he have to say it? He's not just the president, he's not running to be president of the world, but president of America. He put our interests first. Um, and yeah, it's very hard to explain this Syrian attack. It is certainly not a vital national security interest. Um, we generally don't, at least conservatives, don't support rushing around the world for humanitarian reasons. Right. And for that reason, region of the world, Assad uh, is one of the, the better leaders. Um, there are probably only one or two that are better than he. He's not even like a Saddam Hussein murderous thug. Um, he helped well, us after 9-11, giving us intelligence. It's, it's a very strange thing we've done here, and I feel like it is such a departure from what Trump said on the campaign trail and well, he, in 2013 to, on his Twitter feed. Right. No, that, that's all true. Uh, to be fair, he did say yesterday, unequivocally, we're not sending troops to Syria, which I think was reassuring to some people. But it hasn't lessened the enthusiasm of a lot of people here who disliked Trump from the very beginning about getting further involved in one of these wars. And why is that? What's the motivation behind it? Do you know? Well, um, for the left and therefore the media, uh, I think it is identical to their, to their motive for wanting to dump the entire third world on our country. They want to destroy America. We're the greatest country in the world, but if we keep going to war and sending our best Americans to these wars. I mean, I know it's kind of a cliche, but it's not, it's not the graduates of Horace Mann going out off to do the fighting. It tends to be more the West Texas American right. men doing the fighting. And apparently now under, under our new rules, 14-year-old girls, um, but it, it will deplete this country if we keep doing these wars. And I'd, I'd also point out, as I do in, in today's column, this, it's always destroyed presidents, and it has never helped the country we claim we're trying to help. We think we're removing a strong man, and, oh, we're helping the people get out from this, this, this brutal dictator. Well, then the new tribe comes in, and they're always much more brutal than the last tribe, um, and they hate us even more. Um, look at Iraq, Egypt, Libya, Iran. How many times do we have to see that this isn't working? So at least well, that's for the left, because, wait, they just hold enjoy on. Let me, let me having... Just say that's because you didn't go to Harvard, so you're not smart enough to perfectly <laughs> anticipate the outcome of something like this, whereas they are, because you never worked at McKinsey, and they did. Let me ask you about your speech coming up at Cal Berkeley. Um, so a few months ago, of course, that, that, there was literally a riot over uh, the Milo speech. What kind of welcome do you think you're going to get when you go there? Well, I just read on Breitbart that apparently the administration has essentially shut down a David Horowitz speech there. They moved it a mile off campus and it's in the middle of the day when there are classes being held. They cut, the um, sponsor contacted me today. You, you often get these pushbacks from administrators demanding all kinds of money and security fees and all sorts of other things. And um, maybe I shouldn't be saying this because the sponsors haven't necessarily agreed to my proposal yet. But one of the proposals the administration made was limit it to students. And I think that's not such a bad idea. As, as I've yeah. said before, the students at these places aren't the ones rioting. What we're seeing is basically the rioters from Ferguson going around to colleges wherever they think it'll be fun to smash a Starbucks window. <laughs> no, that's right. Well, we wish you luck, Anne, and I hope that this will be your first stop after you get back from there. I know in one piece. Thanks for joining us. <laughs> yes, <laughs> thank you.